What's up guys? I wanted to talk to you about a project that I've been fortunate enough to be involved with for a few years. I've worked with this team for four or five, maybe six years now. It's been a little bit. Uh, but this is Paul Dallenbeck's Pikes Peak car, so known as the Dallenbeck Special. It was originally a Wells Coyote, which was a purpose-built hill climb car for the Colorado hill climb circuit back um, in the 80s era. Uh, this one is very unique in that it's powered by a Buick IndyCar engine. Uh, the guys from Loophole Racing ran this team for a number of years. In the last iteration of this, they put a Buick IndyCar engine in it. Uh, twin turbo, Buick V6 base. It's got a Lola transaxle in it still. Out of the IndyCar, a lot of IndyCar pieces on this thing. Uh, the loophole racing team came from the IndyCar world in the early 90s, late 80s during the Buick stuff. Um, so they had the pieces and the know-how and got it running. Uh, we had a little bit of an issue a couple years ago with the stock Buick ECU, I should stock the IndyCar Buick ECU that was in it uh, from back in the early 90s. Uh, we had gone through the engine, something had happened to the ECU and we couldn't get the car running again. So. We went down there with a uh, Hall Tech Elite 2500 and basically scotch locked some stuff together to make it run and drive and function and we tuned it at PPIR the week of the hill climb. All that stuff was fairly successful. We had a mechanical issue and our run up the mountain unfortunately that year. But after that the car came here to get an actual Hall Tech install. Hall Tech was reached out to us to uh, put this thing on an R3. It's got an R3, Nexus R3 in it, and an IC7, and a CAN keypad in there. Um, it's uh, a unique thing. This car is tuned, it's, a, it's got seven throttle bodies. So it's a V6, it's got six ITVs. If you're familiar with the vintage Buick Indy cars, there were some versions of them that had six ITVs only. Well, this one has a seven throttle body that feeds a large plenum that then feeds the six ITVs that creates a bit of a unique challenge tuning wise because you don't really tune it in speed density because there is a different manifold vacuum on the other side of the six ITVs than there is on the on the back side of the single large throttle that feeds the plenum. So we tune this in alpha N which is throttle position over RPM with a mat manifold pressure offset. So essentially there are seven different VE maps and as manifold pressure goes up it blends between those VE maps. Another unique challenge with it is it's got six injectors that are mounted on top of the ITBs. So basically fuel is raining down on top of that butterfly. So at different throttle positions that fuel does different things, which is why we tune it in alpha N rather than speed density. Um, it's been a pretty successful thing. It's kind of neat to work on an engine like this and frustrating at the same time being that there's no information out there. It's a three tooth crank trigger, single tooth home. Um, but there was no starting point for what ignition timing did you run, what any of that stuff. It runs a pretty unique spark plug and that has no ground strap. It's like a flush steel. I'll show you a picture of it here. You see those two pins that from the center or from the outside to the center, that's where the spark happens. So definitely a unique situation there. It's a 12 millimeter plug as well. So we tried to find a different solution for it and we couldn't find anything that really fit the bill. Anyway, handful of things. Um, but the Hall Tech allows us to do some really cool stuff with this, not only the, the tuning the car in Alpha N with the multiple VE maps, but we can. there's no idle control on this thing. It's all timing control for idle control. We have a bunch of fuel offsets. The car is not intercooled methanol. Uh, so we have a bunch of fuel control stuff to keep the thing at a correct operating temperature just based on lambda trims when it gets up the temp at low loads. Uh, we could do way more with the Haltech system than really what we're taking advantage of with it currently. Uh, the boost control is still mechanical. There are no wheel speed sensors on the car, no shock data on the car. We could add all of that if we were really intending to push this thing to that level of R&D with it. Uh, but it's a pretty low amount of boost deal. It's 14 pounds right now. Uh, it made just shy or right around 600 wheel at uh, 8800 it will run to 10,000 but we're trying to just make the thing live for a while you can imagine vintage IndyCar stuff parts aren't readily available everywhere we do have some pieces and there are pieces available um, but they're a little hard to get our hands on for example we actually lost a camshaft position sensor on this thing and our team sent me a box of six or seven of them and all but one of them was bad right out of the box so Definitely a challenge on that front for replacement parts. 
and it is just a cool thing. And being able to tune it with Haltech with those guys on board was really an awesome deal because being able to make custom VE tables and all the fuel blending however I want inside the Haltech system is just amazing. I can make tables out of any axis you want. It's pretty wild that I'm able to do that with that system. So really grateful to have those guys on board. And being able to work with this team has been awesome. Super just happy to be a part of it. There's so much history in this car. In the driver and Paul himself, that's a whole whole nother topic altogether. And his dad and his brother, they're all professional drivers or were at one point in their in their lives. So very cool. Lots of interesting stories and interesting people. So it's been a great experience from that front as well. Um, I'll show you guys some GoPro footage, some onboard footage from racing this car up Pikes Peak uh, a couple years back. And then a couple dyno poles. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs>